The Detroit Red Wings have been a historic franchise in the NHL, being one of the most dominant teams over the past 30 years. However, these past few years definitely haven't gone Detroit's way. They're in the middle of a rebuild right now, but you know what? They got a lot of nice pieces here. Dylan Larkin, 27 years old. Alexander Dabrink at 25. You got Lucas Raymond, 21 years old. A lot of good players. They also have Patrick Kane. Still haven't figured out the reason for this signing, but you know what? If you can ship him out at the trade deadline, then it makes sense for your team. However, I don't think that's going to be happening. Well, it's going to happen in the rebuild, but it's not happening in real life. I can tell you that. But if it does happen, then I have real questions about why he even joined the team defensively they have jake wallman i mean he's obviously the best defenseman on this team yeah you have mo sider jeff petrie shane goss to spare no st louis legend jake wallman he's the number one guy here we're going to be building the defense around him mo sider can maybe stick around meanwhile in between the pipes another st louis blues legend Vili huso he's not going to be the goaltender for us long term i can tell you that right now but for now he's going to be a solid guy for us now the cap situation for this team not the greatest in the world but not the worst mo sider i'm going to be giving you an extension pretty quick here and same with Lucas Raymond we got to hold on to both of these guys Patrick Kane though we're probably gonna be letting him walk and Shane Goss spare I'll probably trade you at the trade deadline so Mo Sider clearly you're gonna be one of our better defensemen for the next eight years here so I'm gonna give you a massive extension here we're gonna be doing 8.3 for the next eight seasons that's gonna keep you for basically the entire rebuild another guy I want to keep for the entire rebuild is gonna be Lucas Raymond but I'm not sure if eight years at 10 million dollars is actually the move here I mean we could probably get him for 8.8 .8 for the next eight years and that might not be too bad especially if he turns into a great top forward for us you know what i think that's what we're going to do 8.8 .8 for lucas raymond for the next eight years that's a bit expensive but if he can turn into a superstar then that's definitely worth the risk so we're going to go ahead simulate up to the trade deadline here and then we're going to make moves accordingly i don't think we're going to be a stanley cup caliber team so we're probably going to be making some trades here patty kane he's going to be gone at the trade deadline shane osper he's going to be gone as well we're going to be making some big time moves also this is how many subscribers the detroit red wings have now here's how many subscribers I have. We're trying to pass the Detroit Red Wings and YouTube subscribers, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, so it's no surprise the Detroit Red Wings aren't a superstar team. We're 17th in the entire league with a 32, 26, and 5 record. Honestly, this is better than what I was expecting. Our offense is pretty good, 3.44 goals per game, while the defense absolutely abysmal, 3.32 allowed. If we can fix the defense, then this would be a good team. However, we don't want to rush the process here, so we're going to sell this season, hopefully tank and get a top five pick. That's probably not going to happen, but I would like a good draft pick. However, the one thing that's really going to help us here, Patrick Kane's looking incredible, 89 points here in 63 games he actually might be leading the league right now that's absolutely wild outside of our first line though this team looks awful like absolutely terrible and we just gave lucas raymond that massive extension that's great that's real great but you know what we're not going to worry about it we're going to make some big time trades here we're going to build this team up and i already know what the first move we're making is going to be as long as we can get it done of course all right, so I had a plan on what our trade was going to be, but plan A, B, C, D, and E have all backfired on me. So now we're running out of time here, but you know what? Jeff Petrie, I'm going to have to use Trade Finder for you. I just need some draft picks here. Give me only draft picks. I'll take this. A third and fourth rounder from the Boston Bruins. That's good enough. We just have to clear up some cap space. So now that Jeff Petrie's gone, we have a bit more money for next season. That's exactly what we need because Patrick Kane and Robbie Fabry are both being sent over to the Pittsburgh Penguins and we're going to try to pick up Jake Getzel here. Unfortunately, they're going to be saying no right now, but now it's time to throw in those Jeff Petrie picks. So we got a third and fourth rounder from the Boston Bruins and once I add those into the deal, we're going to be getting this done. Jake Getzel, welcome to the team and you've already signed an extension, so you're going to be here for the long run. And unfortunately, we're actually running out of time here, so I'm not going to be able to get a good deal for Shane Goss spare, but I'm still going to trade him here. We're going to be picking up a second and third round from the Vancouver Canucks. Maybe not. We're actually going to be picking up the two second rounders from the Vegas Golden Knights. I also forgot we do have some other expiring contracts on this team and one of them is David Perron. Where is he going to be sent to? Ideally, he gets sent back to the St. Louis Blues and he leads them to a Stanley Cup, but that's not going to be happening for $4.75 million. Nobody's willing to take that contract on. So we're not making any more trades here. We're going to simulate to the end of the season and we're going to hope this team tanks. All right, I have absolutely no clue how this happened, but somehow we snuck into the playoffs. 13th in the entire league with a 43, 33, and 6 record. I still haven't figured out how this happened. There is no reason that we should have made the playoffs, and somehow after the trade deadline, we went on like an eight-game winning streak. I traded away like four guys. 
and all I brought in was Jake Getzel. I guess he was really the difference maker. The scoring on this team was pretty good. Dylan Larkin, 101 points. Can't complain about that. Debrink at 97. Jake Getzel, 59. But what'd you do since joined the team here? 19 points in 19 games, 11 goals, 8 helpers. I like those numbers right there. Lucas Raymond, 49 points. I'm expecting way more from you, but you know what? I guess I'll take it. We don't have a good coach that has good line fits with anyone, so a lot of players are underperforming. Meanwhile, Billy Huso, 34 wins, 3 shots, a 906, and a 320. Obviously, these numbers aren't that good, but if you can turn it around the postseason and we can go on a bit of a run here i'm not going to complain about that so we're jumping into the postseason here we got the new york rangers in the first round i highly doubt we're going to beat this team because the new york rangers they're like a 57 win team or something they're incredible and detroit we're kind of frauds not gonna lie yeah so detroit right now they just can't compete with the new york rangers they have a 3-1 series lead and in game five we're probably going to be losing this one five to one not really much of a surprise the fact that we got into the postseason doesn't really make any sense to me but hey i guess that's just the way it is so moments like this, I just have to turn the face cam on. The Vancouver Canucks finally won a Stanley Cup. It's a miracle. In all the videos I record, this team always loses in the Stanley Cup final. They never win. But here's a day where they win. So shout out to the Vancouver Canucks, Stanley Cup champions. Yeah, I'm not going to have this face cam on at all times. Only in special moments like this. Or whenever St. Louis wins the Stanley Cup, because those are always historic moments. So these postseason numbers are obviously not going to be good. We got smoked in the first round. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers, Vili Huso, I can't really complain about this. I mean, these are awful numbers, but we were going against a 57-win New York Rangers team. We didn't stand a chance. All right, I literally just said I'll only turn the face cam on in special moments, like St. Louis winning the Stanley Cup. Yeah, they were the worst team in the entire league. They got the second overall pick. They dropped from one to two. Yeah, you hate to see it, you really do. Also, the green screen's really messy with me. If I put my hand too close, then my hand gets all green. So yeah, we're working with it right now. That's why I move my hand up so slow. It's just like, I don't know how to do all this stuff. We're working on it though, it's a process. Right now, there isn't that many good draft picks. So I'm gonna try to ship over a couple picks to the Vancouver Canucks in order to get their first rounder for next season. They're gonna be saying no here, but I'm literally willing to offer every single one of our picks for this season. Because if we can get that first rounder, you never know what it's gonna turn into. Now we just have to pray that this team completely falls apart next season. The odds of that happening, very low, but hey, it's worth the risk. And then with our sixth and seventh round pick, I'm gonna send that over to the Anaheim Ducks to get a future third rounder. So we have a handful of picks for next season's draft. Hopefully one of these guys can turn into a superstar for us. So we've reached the re-sign phase and now it's time to start bringing some guys back. Rasmussen will do four years at 1.7 million. You know what? We're gonna do five years at 1.8 million dollars. I can see him being a really important bottom six piece for us. Similar to our last re-signing, Joe Valeno is gonna be coming back 2.5 for the next five. I think he's gonna be an important bottom six piece as well. So I'm working on a deal with the Montreal Canadiens, which would send Billy Huso over there. And we're gonna pick up Caden Gooley. He's gonna be a good young defenseman for us. I'm taking out the third round pick because I don't think we're gonna be able to get that. Of course we're not, but it looks like Billy Husso in a seventh round is going to be enough. So here we go, Billy Husso in a seventh round pick, and we got Caden Gooley for the defense, and then we'll go ahead and offer him an extension. Now that we trade Billy Husso away, we need a starting goaltender for ourselves, and I think that's going to be Kochetkov, so a third round is going to be sent over to Carolina. They're going to be saying that's not enough, and I really should have known that. The trade values aren't even close. So here's a seventh rounder from the St. Louis Blues, and now you love this deal. So when it comes to making a lot of free agent signings here, I think we're going to pass. I don't want to spend a lot of money this season because we do have to give out extensions for next season. So if I sign a bunch of guys to long-term deals and we still haven't given out extensions, then I don't know what type of money we're going to be working with. By the way, Caden Gooley, what are you going to be looking for? 4.3 for the next five. I'll do 3.9 for the next five. I feel like that's a great deal for both sides. We get you locked down long-term and you get your bag. All right, so that new coach is going to be making a massive difference here. Dylan Larkin, Jake Getzel, JT Comper on the first line, Debrinkat, Kopp, and Lucas Raymond on the second. Lucas Raymond's going to develop some X factors over the next couple seasons. I'm not too worried about the money we gave him. The bottom six is not the greatest in the world, but you know what? We can work with it. Marco Casper is going to play some fourth line minutes this season. He has a good line fit. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a top six guy in the next two years. Meanwhile, Joe Valeno, what a great contract that was. Look at that line fit he has. He's going to be sticking around for a long time. Time. Meanwhile, the defense, the line fits here are just incredible. Edmondson's going to be playing alongside Mo Sider on the first line, Caden Gooley and Justin Hall, and then Ben Sherrod's going to be playing with Jake Wallman on that third pairing. Yes, I said Jake Wallman was going to be leading the defense, and now he's on the third pairing. Don't question it. Meanwhile, Kochekov, 86 overall, he's definitely the guy for us. This was an incredible pickup for what we had to give up. What did I trade? A third and seventh rounder for him, and now he's an 86 overall? Stick on the ice is cooking like usual. Now, the best thing that could potentially happen this season is we 
we finished first in the entire league and win a Stanley Cup, while the Vancouver Canucks finished dead last because we have their first round pick. Detroit should do better than last season because if you look at the actual team here, we're definitely better. I don't really want Tory Krug, I'm going to be completely honest. We're going to be turning that package down. But as I said, Detroit's a better team. We're going to prey on Vancouver's downfall and we're going to get ready for a deep postseason run. Unfortunately, the Detroit Red Wings haven't been that good this season. 15th in the entire league with a 33-26-2 record. Our offense has taken a massive step back, but I guess our defense is headed in the right direction because that's sort of better. 3.16. Then again, the offense is tied with the defense, so I think we know what we have to fix. We got to start scoring more goals. The top guys on this team are looking okay, I guess. Debrink at 55 points, Larkin 55, Lucas Raymond, he's got 51, but Jake Getzel 50 points and minus 10 with JT Comper. He's got 49 points and minus 14. I need you to be producing at a better rate. Meanwhile, taking a quick look at Kochekov's numbers, 22 wins here, three shots, and 899 at 319. I'm not going to judge you based on this season. Two years down the line is when the real judging begins, because that's when this team is going to be at their best, and that's when they're really going to be competing for Stanley Cups. Until then, though, let's get another piece for the forward core. Also, I completely forgot we have Vancouver's pick, but unfortunately, they're seventh in the entire league here. That kind of sucks, not going to lie. I was banking on their downfall. So I think this could be a very interesting move for our team. A second rounder and Andrew Kopp is going to be sent over to the Buffalo Sabres and we're going to pick up Alex Tuck. Now Alex Tuck, he is 28 years old right now and he is going to need an extension pretty soon. But an 87 overall power forward, I feel like that's what we're missing on this team. We need a bit of grit. So can we get this deal done? They're going to be saying no here, but I'm willing to throw in a couple draft picks, maybe even a prospect or two. Now I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of bugging here and I'm just yapping because the third, fourth, and fifth rounder, that's going to be enough to be the difference maker with the Buffalo Sabres. We really didn't have to give up too much. I mean, we gave up three more draft picks, but a fifth rounder is not really much. A fourth rounder isn't that much. The third rounder, sort of valuable, but we just got Tuck and that's what we want. Now, I think that move for Alex Tuck's going to be the last one we do here. I've been taking a look at what's available, but I don't want to rush the process here. If we're not ready to win a Stanley Cup this season, then let's not try to win a Stanley Cup. So here's what the lines are going to be looking like right now. We're going to have a high scoring one, which is going to be Dylan Larkin, Jake Getz on Alex Debrinkat. Then it's going to be Alex Tuck, Joe Valeno, and Lucas Raymond. Right now, the second line might be a bit weak, but Joe Valeno, he's going to get some reps here on the top six. He'll develop into an 84, maybe an 85 overall player. He's still young, only 25 years old. Yeah, the sky's the limit for this top six right here. So after we made those moves at the trade deadline, we were actually one of the best teams in the entire league. We're going to be finishing 11th here with a 46, 30, and 6 record. The offense, pretty solid here, 3.13. I mean, I can't say this was solid because at the trade deadline, I said the offense wasn't that good. While the defense were below three goals per game, that's a win in my eyes. Now the scoring might not be too great here, but after the changes we made, this team's definitely better off. And Alex Tuck, what'd you do since joined the team? 18 points in 21 games, 8 goals, 10 assists. These are definitely numbers I can live with. You, Lucas Raymond, and then Joe Valeno on that second line, y'all are going to be something special. I can guarantee it right now. You know who else is going to be something special? Kochetkov. He's got a defense in front of him now. 33 wins, 5 shots, a 908, and a 297. Let's go on a bit of a surprise run here. Let's upset some teams. And this first team we're taking on the postseason, it really should should be a breeze because I'm not managing them anymore. So if you don't know what I was referencing, we got the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round. We're taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs and not the stick on the ice Maple Leafs. If you know, you know. And if you don't know, you should know. Okay, you see this right here? That's not ideal. We're somehow down 3-1 in the series. I have no clue how that happened, but here we are and we're out in five games. All right, so after running my mouth as much as I did, the Toronto Maple Leafs just won the Stanley Cup beating the Vegas Golden Knights. I was running my mouth talking about how Toronto wouldn't be able to do it without me. Now here we are, Toronto Stanley Cup champs. You just hate to see it, you really do. So the top guys on this team clearly performed. Alex Debrink had 7 points, Dylan Larkin 6, Jake Getzel 6. The rest of the team, non-existent, like these boys did not show up. And Kochekov, these are numbers. These are numbers indeed. They're not good numbers, they're just numbers. Bro really had like an 870 and a 450. That is tough. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, for the first video I show my face in, I did not expect for me to be showing up as much as I am. But St. Louis, y'all finished dead last once again. You dropped from one to three this time. Do I need to step in and take over and rebuild your team? Because this is unacceptable. We should be way better than this. So we had back-to-back -back picks in the draft here, the 21st overall and the 22nd. But with the 22nd overall, we're going to be getting a low lead potential player. Arvidsson might be able to develop into a good guy for us. He's already a 64 overall, so I think he's about four years away from jumping into the lineup. And it looks like the good prospects aren't done there because in the second round with the 53rd overall, we're going to be securing a 61 overall medium lead potential goaltender. And it looks like the elite potential player is going to keep on coming here, a medium lead potential defender 
defenseman. I doubt this guy's going to be joining the lineup for us, so he's going to be a good trade asset. We already have way too many defensemen on our team, and we have way too many good defensemen. Then again, the right side could use some work, but we'll address that during the offseason. Now, we're not going to make too many moves during the re-sign phase here, but I would like to bring Clem Costin back on a three-year deal at $1.6 He's a good bottom six player for us. And you know what? This is actually working out great for us. One of the medium leap potential players that the Detroit Red Wings actually drafted plays on the right side defense. So we're going to be signing this man right now and he's going to be jumping into the lineup next season. All right, so I guess Clem Costin's actually going to be saying no to that extension right there. I do want to do three years, so maybe three years at 1.7. Hopefully that's enough for him. I'm willing to do 1.8, but I don't really want to do too much more than that. I guess 100k is going to be the difference maker and Clem Costin's returning to the team. All right, so let the big extensions begin and we're going to be starting with Alex Tuck here. I can actually do a contract like this, 8.7 for the next three years. This is actually a really good deal because then it doesn't keep him too long after his prime. But I mean, then again, I would like to do less than 8 million. So how about we do 7.7 .7 for the next three years? That's a good contract for you. You get the money you want and we can keep you around in your prime. Edvinson, it has to be a long-term deal with you, plain and simple, 4.9 for the next eight. That's such a good deal. I can't even process it right now. Meanwhile, Jake Wallman, I can't give you an extension. Not too sure why, but it is what it is. And then with Sebastian Nicosa, we'll do a four-year deal at $2 million. He's going to be a good backup goaltender for us. And at that price, it's actually pretty reasonable. And to finish off all the extensions, William Wallander will do 1.9 for the next three years. You're probably going to play in the AHL this season on the top line because I want you getting a lot of minutes. And then next season, you could potentially be playing some second, maybe third pairing minutes. I haven't decided quite yet. So we're probably not going to spend a lot of money here in free agency. But Kale Fleury, I'll do 1.1 for the next two seasons. You can play on the right side and that's exactly where we need help. Okay, how about about something like this instead JT Comper over to the Minnesota Wild and we pick up Marco Rossi and he can play second line minutes for us an 87 overall he's got some x factors I think him on the second line would actually be more valuable than Joe Valeno so I think that's going to be the trade we're going to be picking up Marco Rossi here I don't know what else we're going to add into this deal I mean their trade block works a lot better with us do you guys want first round picks unfortunately they don't but here's a third rounder and here's a fifth rounder this isn't going to be enough but I'm still going to offer it over we'll throw some prospects in this deal and we'll get it done so maybe a package like this could work i don't think it is minnesota is still gonna be saying no to that let's just throw in some second rounders so we're gonna try a deal like this jt compra second round pick and a fifth round pick for marco rossi all i want is rossi on this team bro is gonna be an absolute stud for us at that cap hit five point some million there's not too many contracts out there better than that. So Marco Rossi, I actually think we're pretty close here. Maybe a third in the lucrative seventh round pick. I'm sending this over. We got the man we needed. I think that's the missing piece for this team. Our top six is absolutely incredible. The bottom six isn't too bad either. We're ready for a big time Stanley Cup run. So here's what the team's looking like. Dylan Larkin, Dabrinkat, gets on the first line. That's not changing at all. Lucas Raymond, Rossi, and Alex Tuck on the second. Unfortunately, Marco Rossi doesn't have the greatest line fit here, but we're going to work around that. The bottom six has seen some upgrades with the lowest overalls being some 80s. We can work with that here. Defensively, we're actually better this season. Evanson, Mo Sider, Caden Gooley, Jake Wallman, Justin Hall, and then the young Pelica jumping into the lineup here. He might only be a 79 overall, but he's 20 years old. He's going to keep on getting better. The sky's the limit for a guy like him medium elite potential yeah he's gonna develop into a stud for us that's for sure meanwhile the goaltending we already know what that's looking like Kochetkov he's an 87 overall Sebastian Kos is backing him up at an 80 overall we have two fantastic goalies we can run with we should definitely be going on a deep run in the postseason or at least be competing with the best in the league one of the two so the Detroit Red Wings are definitely headed in the right direction here. We're going to be sitting 11th in the entire league with a 35-23-5 and record. The offense flying right now, but our defense, actually it's not flying. Neither are flying. 3.11 and 3.10. Neither of these are actually that good. I don't know why I'm gassing this team up. But hey, I'll definitely take a 35-23-5 record. That's actually pretty solid. And just taking a quick look at this team right here, it's clear what the issue is. The top six has no problem scoring and neither does Mo Sider. It's literally every other player on this team. Nobody else can score. Marco Casper only 15 points. That's going to change right now. Kochekov, I can't really complain about these numbers. 26 wins, 3 shots, a 907, and a 307. Like, they're not good, but we're going to make some big moves here. Help out the bottom six. And by helping out the bottom six, we're also helping you out. So this is the trade we're doing. Clark Caswell, McIsaac, a 6th and 5th 
fifth round pick sent over to the Carolina Hurricanes and we're bringing in Seth Jarvis. He's going to bring some scoring to the bottom six, but he's also going to help the defense a bit. He's an 85 overall game paid like 4.5 million. That's a contract I can live with. And to finish it all off, we're going to be making a bit of a riskier move here. It's going to be a prospect over to the Seattle Kraken. And we're going to be picking up Tolvan in here. He's going to be able to score goals as long as he can play a bit of defense as well. And as long as he has a good line fit, then this move is right for the team. All right, this is actually going to come in clutch for us. Taylor Radish, we're going to claim him on waivers here. The reason we're claiming him is he can fit on all forward lines. That includes the fourth. So in just three years, we've turned Detroit into a powerhouse. Fifth in the entire league with a 50, 27, and 5 record. The offense has really turned it around while the defense, a goals against a three, not necessarily the greatest in the world, but it's definitely been worse, that's for sure. And it's obvious the biggest difference here is the bottom six scoring. Seth Jarvis, what have you done since joining the team? I'm not expecting too much. 10 points in 19 games though, that's some solid production. While Tolvanen, I don't think you did too much either. 9 points in 19 games. For bottom six guys, these actually aren't that bad of deals. Taylor Radish, you were playing some fourth line minutes, nine points in 18 games. It's definitely better than what we had before, that's for sure. By fixing the bottom six, we're also fixing Kochekov's numbers. 37 wins, four shots, a 909 and 296. Still not the greatest numbers in the world, but if we can bring this team back for an entire season and he doesn't suck in the first 60 games, I guarantee this man has a 915 to 270. But at the end of the day, it just doesn't matter what you do in the regular season because this is when you need to step it up. We have the Boston Bruins in the first round. This team is always a tough task. Detroit, if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best and that's what you have to do right now. So I understand we're in year number three right now, but how are we down 3-1 in the series? Game five is going to be a big win for us. We're taking that one 3-2. Maybe we can make a 3-1 series comeback here. Okay, we've won three straight games. Not only are we making a 3-1 series comeback, but it's actually a 3-0 series comeback because we lost the first three games of the series. We got game seven around the corner. If this team can beat Boston, then we're off to the second round for the first time in a very long time. Not like seriously, when was the last time Detroit won a playoff series? It's actually been a minute. So here we go, game seven of the first round. Can the Detroit Red Wings step it up? We're going to be exchanging goals with Boston in the first round, but in the second, Caden Gooley, he's taking over. He's picking up a goal on Allmark. The third period is going to be deciding this one, and it looks like we're going to keep on picking up goals. Tolvan is going to be picking up a crucial one, and we're off to the second round after making the big 3-0 series comeback. Okay, there is no reason we should not make the conference finals. Tampa's upsetting the Buffalo Sabres big time here. Tampa only won 39 games. We are not losing to a 39 win team. Bro, we're not doing this again. We lost the first three games of this series, but woke up in game number four here. We got to respond in game five. Why are we always putting ourselves in this position? I don't think we're going to be able to make another comeback here. Okay, if we make two straight 3-0 series comebacks, then this game is just completely broken. What is going on here? You see this right here? This shouldn't be happening. There is no reason that we should be making a comeback right now, but I'll take it. I'm not going to complain. Also, if you're wondering, yes, I don't have my headphones sitting properly. I always keep one on my head. I have no clue why I just do. So here we go. Game seven, another 3-0 series comeback on the line. Okay, we're toast. We're not making a big comeback here. We don't stand a chance anymore. Seven to one. Yeah, we're not making that comeback. We lost nine to two. That is embarrassing. So far, the Toronto Maple Leafs have now won more Stanley Cups than we've won series. We have to change that immediately. Now, I don't know if we're a good team or we're a bad team. We went down 3-0 to Boston, made the incredible comeback. Then we went down 3-0 to the Tampa Bay Lightning and lost in seven games. If we don't suck for the first three games, then we're in the conference finals right now and we wouldn't even have to worry. Kochetkov, seven wins here. The numbers, absolutely abysmal. I'm not really going to blame you, but maybe I should start blaming you here. I don't even know what the issue is with this team. We had a 50-27-5 record. We would suck in the first three games of the postseason, but the next four games after that, then we lock in. Now, I really don't know actually what the issue is with this team. Why do we suck in the first three games of the series so often? Now, the draft really wasn't that great for us. We didn't get any notable prospects. The best player we're getting is going to have medium top four potential. Now, when it comes to giving out extensions, nothing's really going to be given out here unless it's a two-way contract. So, Tolvanen and Jake Wallman, we're going to be saying bye to both of these guys. We're also going to be saying bye to Justin Hall and Ben Sherratt, but those ones don't really break my heart. Now, we do have a couple of extensions to give out here. We're going to be starting with Debrinkat. Obviously, he's going to be wanting a bag, but this is actually a lot better than what I was expecting. So shout out to Alex Debrinkat for being an absolute king here, and we're going to give him 8.3 for the next eight years. That's keeping him around for the rest of the rebuild, or until we want to trade him. And then Marco Casper, 2.6 for the next eight seasons. I have a feeling you're going to end up being a top six guy for us in about two seasons. Meanwhile, Taylor Radish, you hold it down in the fourth line, so here's 1.95 for the next three. So I have absolutely no clue why Kochekov's only asking for 6.1 million for six years. We're going to do 5.5 for the next six. 
will be able to retain him for the rest of the rebuild and he's still a really young goaltender he's got himself an x-factor now at 87 overall we're set in between the pipes an 87 and an 83 now he's got to build a good defense in front of these guys. Now, after we fixed our bottom six last season, we were a fantastic team, but I think we could make a few more improvements. So 3.1 is going to Michael Bunting for this upcoming season. Another guy that could potentially be a good addition is going to be Ryan Donato. We'll do one year, 2.9 million. So here we go in season number four here, and we should clearly be the Stanley Cup favorite. Larkin, Debrinkat, Jake Getz on the first line. They're getting a plus three boost. Then Alex Tuck, Marco Rossi, Lucas Raymond on the second line. They're getting a plus two boost. Lucas Raymond's up to an 89 overall things are looking fantastic for this team and you know what else is fantastic the bottom six here we don't have any weaknesses across the board we're ready to pick up goals and we're gonna be picking up a lot of them even if we're putting a ton of pucks in the back of the net we got to keep them out of ours and i feel like this defense right here can do that the lowest overall being kale flurry and 80 overall but he's getting a plus one boost on that third pairing the second pairing is getting a plus one while the first pairing they're gonna be getting a plus two and to cap it all off we have one of the best goaltenders in the league right now 87 overall kochekov we have him locked down for the rest of the rebuild and we also have an 85 overall kosa backing him up two guys we can rely on for a while also sebastian kosa how many more years do i have you four years at two million dollars we're set the goaltending tandem is going to cost us about eight million dollars and it's going to be an 87 and an 85 it's finally happened the greatness of detroit's back first in the entire league 42 15 and 5 scoring 4.18 goals per game something that this team has lacked has been goal scoring and now we're the best in the entire league while the defense 2.66 we're also the best defensive team we score a lot of goals we keep the puck out of our net now we just have to win when it matters most also i think i said we had the best defense in the entire league i can't remember if i did we're actually second best the ranges are slightly better and just look at the scoring on this team our top guys are making big time plays out here while the third and fourth line they might not be scoring a lot but they're playing some good defense and that's what's helping and to cap it all off two elite goaltenders Kochetkov, 26 wins two shots a 904 and a 289 but Sebastian Costa we can't sleep on you 16 wins a 929 a 212 you might be the guy when the postseason comes around because these numbers spectacular however with all that being said i think we should make one trade here but i'm not really sure what that trade is going to be all right so if we're going to compete for a stanley cup we do have to make one addition to the team and we're going to be trading Caden Gooley. although i signed him to a fantastic deal i think i'd rather have chicken at six million dollars he's an 87 overall he's got a ton of x factors and he can fail on every single defensive line if we can have Chikorin and Mo Sire playing alongside each other, then it might be over for the rest of the league. They're going to be saying no to this deal right here, but I think a third rounder can be the difference maker. Before we try a third rounder though, let's throw in a fourth because maybe a fourth can be the difference maker. They're going to be saying no, I think it's going to have to be a third and fourth rounder. So we're going to be creating this trade package right here. I'm sending that over to the Ottawa Senators. They've accepted the deal and now Detroit's ready to bring home the Stanley Cup. We've got everything we need. So this is what the new look defense is going to be looking like. It's going to be Chikorin and Mo Sire holding it down that first pairing. Evans is moving down to the second pairing while Wallander's moving down to the third. The right side might be slightly weak here, but look at this top defensive pairing. This is definitely the right move for us. Yeah, so Detroit's pretty good. First in the entire league, 56, 21, and 5, averaging 4.11 goals per game and only allowing 2.66. And 2.66, that's definitely the best in the entire league, no doubt about it. Okay, when it comes to the scoring, I never would have guessed Dylan Larkin would have 112 points, but here we are. Debrink at 109, Jake Getzel 92, Lucas Raymond 85, Alex Tuck 80, Marco Rossi 77. This team's just fantastic from top to bottom, no weaknesses in the slightest. While the goaltender, you got Kochekov, 37 wins, Kosa's got 19, four shouts, a 910 to 281, while Kosa's got 926 and a 219. Kosa's really making me think I should put him in between the pipes for the playoffs. Like these numbers are fantastic but Kochekov he played a majority of the games he went against the tougher teams we're gonna ride or die with Kochekov so I had to bring up the face camp this is an important conversation Detroit I have no clue if I'm actually looking at the Detroit Red Wings I'm just assuming my eyes are looking at their logo we're guessing honestly Y'all better not lose the first three games of this series. You better not start 0-3. So right now, things are looking great. However, our defense has not been good. We're up 3-1 in the series here. We're looking to close it out. Another seven goal game. Seven goals here. Seven goals here. Six goals here. Six goals here. However, in a lot of these games, we are allowing way too many goals. So we got to tighten up the defense for sure. So we got past the Washington Capitals and we moved on to the second round. We have the Buffalo Sabres, another incredible team. The only way we're beating Buffalo is if we tighten up the defense. If our defense is the same as it was against Washington, then we don't stand a chance. 
And although our defense hasn't necessarily been the greatest, our offense continues to roll. And in game five, we're going to be closing this series out. Never mind, we're dropping that one six to four. We got to show up here in game number six. That's exactly what's happening. A big 4 2 victory. And now we have the Florida Panthers up next. Detroit's rolling right now, and I don't want to stop a sweep over the Florida Panthers. That's exactly what's happening. And now we're in the Stanley Cup final. So all we need is four more wins here, and then we'll be Stanley Cup champions. And I'll rebuild the Detroit Red Wings back to their greatness. However, one Stanley Cup's not going to be enough for me. We got to win at least three, but I think I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. First, we have to beat Minnesota, but clearly we're not going to mess around here. And we're just going to make this a quick four game series. We're already coming off a sweep in the conference finals. Although we dropped game number one, we're going to be winning three straight games here and we're going to make this our fourth. Never mind, we're not winning four straight games here, but in game six, we're Stanley Cup champions. A massive 5-1 victory for us. Detroit's back for greatness, and the dynasty's been rebuilt. Well, I shouldn't say the dynasty's been rebuilt, because, I mean, we've only won one Stanley Cup. But we're about to win a couple more. So the scoring on this team, absolutely incredible. And there is one thing I want to point out. Alex Dabrinkat. He had 15 goals in 15 games. He finished with 15 goals in 21 games. In our final six games in the Stanley Cup final, he didn't score a single goal and we still were able to come out on top. That's how dominant this team is right now. And goaltending wise, Kochetkov, a 16 and five record, a 915 to 273. Let's get ready to run it back next season. The entire team's coming back. We're gonna rock with the exact same squad and I'm expecting the same result. So after winning the Stanley Cup, obviously we gotta keep the team together and that's exactly what's gonna be happening. Everyone's coming back next season except for Michael Bunting and Ryan Donato you know what we're gonna be able to survive here and I actually want to try and move like this the 32nd overall in the sixth rounder which is the 192nd over to the New York Rangers for a future first round pick I want to see if we can acquire a future first round pick because obviously the 32nd overall that's not gonna have a ton of value however can we trade it to a team that's technically a contender right now and then bank on them absolutely tanking next season and then we get a top 10 pick I'm gonna try something like that obviously we're not gonna begin the Rangers pick but there's some other options out there. So we weren't able to get the Rangers pick, but maybe we can get a future one from the Buffalo Sabres. I'm offering that over. Unfortunately, they're going to be saying no. What if I include another fourth round pick? I feel like those two extra picks should be enough to get the first overall for next season. I don't know why I said first overall. I meant a first rounder for next season. So for next season, we have two first rounders to work with. However, for this season, we're not going to be making any selections. Now, I said Michael Bunting wasn't going to be rejoined the team, but at 2.5 for the next three, I feel like that's a fair contract for him. And then we're also going to bring back Kale Flurry. We'll do two point three for the next three he plays some good third pairing minutes for us unfortunately bunting's actually saying no here maybe we'll do 2.6 for the next three 2.6 for the next three i feel like that's a reasonable contract for him there you go he was really being tight over 100k right now it just seems like everything is going our way and people are signing reasonable contracts with the team and pelica we're going to do 4.8 for the next six seasons that's going to keep you around for the rest of the rebuild now i think this is going to be one of those rebuilds where we make very few changes to the team we're not going to make a lot of trades from here on out we're not going to make a ton of free agent signings we're just going to keep on bringing the exact same team back. We have this entire team under contract for this season and next season. We're in a really good spot right now, and why screw it up when this team's winning 50 plus games and Stanley Cups? All right, so we already know what the team consists of. It's basically the exact same team as last season. I think it might be identical. The defense, we're going to have Chickren for the entire year, so we might even win 60 games here. The rest of the defensive core, we got a lot of good young pieces, and a lot of them are continuing to develop here. They're going to be even better next season. This team's going to be unstoppable. Meanwhile, in between the pipes 87 overall Kochekov, 86 overall Sebastian Kosa you can't name a better goaltending tandem than this now that I've made that comment I'm fully expecting to see a comment saying oh I can name a better goaltending tandem Linus Allmark and Jeremy Swayman that doesn't count Okay, plain and simple, it's over for the rest of the league. We're first with a 43-14-4 record. We're scoring over four goals per game and only allowing 2.33. This team's unstoppable. We're the best team offensively, by far the best team defensively, and just look at the individual stats on this team right here. A ton of guys over a point a game right now. This team really can't be stopped. And then we have these two goaltenders sharing the net for the next couple years, Kochekov and Sebastian Kosa. The save percentage and goals against for both these guys is absolutely incredible. We're not making any moves here. We're not gonna screw up the team we're just going to rock with what we have. Also, I guess I could take a look at how the Buffalo Sabres are doing because we do have their first round pick. So hopefully the Buffalo Sabres are doing terrible right now. They're third in our division right now, so they're not going to get a top pick. But you know what? I'll just end up flipping that first rounder to another team next season and then hope that team tanks. By the end of this video, one of these picks that we're trading is going to end up top five. I can tell you that right now. Of course, Detroit's going to be finishing the season out strong here with a 56-19-7 record, one of the best offenses in the game and the best defense by far. What was the closest defense to us? 
we were 2.41, the Dallas Stars 2.78. That's quite the difference there. We allowed 30 less goals than them, and we were scoring a lot more. And that scoring clearly came from our top guys. Jake gets all 101 points. Shout out to Lucas Raymond, 99. He's living up to that contract. Dylan Larkin, 99. And Alex Debrink at 93. Look at all the guys here above a point a game. You'll love to see it. That's some amazing depth scoring. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers, I don't care who's in net for the postseason. Obviously, it's going to be Kochetkov, but either one of these guys we could rock with. And it all starts here. The team whose first round pick we own, the Buffalo Sabres. Obviously, we want to take this team out as soon as possible because we want that pick to have a bit of value. All right, after the first two games, I honestly thought we were toast in this series. But then an 8-2 win in game number three and a 7-3 win in game number four, I think we have all the momentum now. A 3-2 victory in game five is going to give us the lead in the series. And in game six, we're going to be closing this one out. Never mind, the Sabres are putting up a lot bigger fight than I was expected and we're off to game seven. Whatever y'all do, do not lose in the first round here. We can't allow that to happen. Detroit's going to be picking up a goal early on. We're doubling down the second period. Unless we completely choke this lead, we should be moving on to the second round. Wow. Okay, that is something. We choked. We lost four to three in game seven. We had a 3-1 lead entering the third period, and here we are eliminated in seven games. This team was hoping to repeat and win another Stanley Cup, and here we are. Out in the first round, the best team in the entire NHL. I don't even know what to say, I'm speechless right now. I mean, I guess the lone positive is Buffalo lost in the second round, so I mean, there is that. But even still, how did that even happen to us? No, but in all seriousness, I'm actually speechless right now. Dylan Larkin, 9 points in 7 games. What happened to this team? Did the scoring just fall apart? Were we not playing good defense? Seth Jarvis, minus 7. That probably didn't help the cause here. And the goaltending numbers, Kochetkov, bro, you sucked. An 887 and a 361. Kosa, you only played for 8 minutes and you allowed 1 goal on 3 shots. Don't know how that happened, but it did. Our two star-studded goaltenders folded. This shouldn't have happened, especially with how good our defense was. Since there's nobody great projected around the 28th overall range, we're going to be sending this pick over to the Colorado Avalanche, and ideally we pick up a first and sixth rounder. I don't think we're going to get the sixth here, but I think we can do one first round pick for another. So I'm going to send that over. They're saying no, but if we include a seventh round pick, then we'll easily be able to get this deal done. And just like that, we have Colorado's first round pick for next season. Let's just hope this team falls apart. Also, if you're wondering why I'm always trading with the good teams, it's because I can't trade with a bottom 10 team. If I give them the 28th overall pick for their pick next season, they're going to want two first rounders for it. They're well aware they're a bad team. We just have to bank on one of these really good teams completely collapsing. So not only did we not have many draft picks here, but we also didn't get very many good prospects. We got one player with top six potential. He might be able to develop into something. He's like a 76 overall. Outside of that, nothing good. So let's start giving out extensions. We're going to start with Berggren. We're going to give him 1.1 for the next two years. Actually, why am I being cheap? I'll give you 1.2. I'll give you exactly what you want. Klim Costa, on the other hand, unfortunately, we're going to have to let this man walk. However, with a guy like Masar, I can do a three-year deal at $1 million on a two-way contract. You're 79 overall. I feel like you can be Klim Costa's replacement. That might be one of the smartest moves I've made all video. So we're officially halfway through the rebuild here. And Joe Valeno, you've actually done a really good job on the third line. So I want to keep you here for the rest of the rebuild. 3.3 for the next four years. I feel like that's a good contract for you. Jacob Chikrin, on the other hand, I don't really know if I want to give you 10 million dollars i'm going to be completely honest so we might let you walk in free agency here another guy we're probably going to let walk alex tuck 7.7 .7 million that's what he's getting paid right now and he's looking for 12 million that's not going to happen we're going to ride out both these guys contracts and then next season we'll make some moves to improve the team and i think one of those moves might just be giving wallander some more minutes so we'll do 4.9 for the next four years and that will keep him around for the rest of the rebuild he'll play some second pairing minutes next season while evanson he'll move back up to the first line also rasmussen two years at 800k why not also we do have a medium elite potential goaltender in the system right now i'll give him 1.1 for the next two years you never know, he could be a backup for us in the next couple seasons. Because if I'm being completely honest, I don't think Sebastian Kos is going to be here too much longer. This man's going to want a bag eventually. Also, Kochekov's up to a 90. Yeah, we're winning a Stanley Cup this season. He's got a superstar X Factor. It's over for the rest of the league. We're winning 60 plus games. Okay, if we can lock down Andrew Peak here for the next three years at say like 1.8 million, then I'll bring him onto the team. But if he doesn't accept this contract, I'm actually perfectly fine with that. Then we'll just run with Kale Flurry again. I'm going to be honest, I'm really surprised Andrew Peak accepted this deal, but we'll take it. 1.8 for the next three. That's a great contract. All right, so we're running it back with the exact same team, except Arvidsson's jumping into the lineup here. We're going to ignore the fact that he's a centerman playing left wing. He's 21 years old. He's an 83 overall with low elite potential. He could develop 
develop into a really good player for us, especially since guys like Dylan Larkin are 32 years old, DeBrancat's 30, Jake Getzel, he's 33. They might age out in the next couple seasons, but until then, we're going to keep on winning. The defense is absolutely spectacular here. No weaknesses whatsoever. Our lowest overall is Andrew Peek, who's at 80, but he's getting a plus two overall boost, so you know what? I can definitely live with that. Meanwhile, the goaltending situation, 90 overall coach Chetkov, 86 overall Sebastian Kosa backing him up. Obviously, we're going to be an incredible regular season team, but these boys got to step up in the playoffs. We can't have the same numbers as last season. All right, so there's two really unfortunate things right now. Number one, we're third in the entire league with a 40-17-7 record, and the Colorado Avalanche are fourth overall, so that pick's not going to have any value whatsoever. Our offense is still pretty good, though, while our defense 2.66, I think that's pretty solid. However, I do think we should make one change to the team. we got to get a bit better, because Buffalo right now, they're kind of rolling. Where we would see that change, though, I'm actually not too sure. Dylan Larkin, 86 points. Jake Getzel, 72. Debrink at 71. The top six on this team, absolutely incredible. Maybe we trade Alex Tuck away, because he's not really performing then again this top six we've always been able to rely on so i think we got to stick with it the bottom six maybe could use a bit more help but i don't really know who we're going to trade away meanwhile the goaltending numbers kochekov a 906 and a 262 explain to me how he basically ran it back with the exact same defense the exact same team you're up to a 90 overall with superstar x factors and these are the numbers you're posting sometimes this game just confuses me like how are we worse so you know who I haven't acquired in a very long time? Sam Bennett. We already know this man's a stick on the ice legend. 87 overall. He technically could play on the first line here. But ideally, I want him on the bottom six because I think that's where we need some help. So a second rounder and a prospect is going to be sent over to the Florida Panthers. I don't even know why I offered bothering this deal. Obviously, it wasn't going to get accepted. However, we do have another good young prospect that I can maybe throw into this deal. I'm going to send that over. Florida's saying no, but we're just a bit low. So we'll throw in a seventh rounder and we're going to be bringing in Sam Bennett. So the seventh rounder has been added and Sam Bennett, welcome to the team. That's going to be the lone move we're making here. Let's get ready for a Stanley Cup. So this is what we're going to rock with. It's going to be Sam Bennett, Marco Casper, and Seth Jarvis on that third line. They're getting a plus one boost here. Really, this top nine should not be able to be stopped. We should be scoring five goals a game. I don't know why we're not. Meanwhile, the defense, I can rely on every single one of these guys night in and night out. I can't figure out how the Buffalo Sabres are better than us. I really can't. So obviously we were a good team, but we weren't the best. Third in the entire league with a 52-21-9 record. I got to give props to the Boston Bruins and Buffalo Sabres. I don't know how those teams are so good this season. Our offense, it was good, but not quite as good as them. While our defense, that was actually better than both of them. I mean, that's a lie. The Boston Bruins had a better defense than us, but we were better than Buffalo in that department. Now y'all see these numbers right here. I need these in the postseason. Like I literally need Alex to bring out to pick up 111 points in the postseason. Season. Sam Bennett, what'd you do since joined the team here? You had 12 points in 18 games, but you were minus nine. Okay, I was actually hoping for a lot better than that, but I guess not. The goaltending numbers, what are they looking like? Kochetkov, 35 wins, one shot, a 905 and a 272. Sebastian Kosa, a 908 and a 272. What happened to the great defense we had? And we need to be playing at our best. We have the Boston Bruins in the first round. And even if we can get by Boston, then we have the Buffalo Sabres up next. Because ain't no way Toronto's beating the Buffalo Sabres. Then again, Toronto has also won two Stanley Cups in this video. So what do I know? All right, so it's one of those series where we lose the first three games. Then we have to make a 3-0 series comeback. We've already won game four. So now we have to win game number five. Okay, we're out in the first round. That's back-to-back -back seasons now where we've lost in the first round. This should not be happening to the Detroit Red Wings. We're going to be losing a handful of good pieces during the offseason here. It's going to be tough for us to get back to this position, but you know what? I think we've done a really good job managing the cap here. We've got a lot of money to work with, and I think we'll be able to get back pretty quick. Also, Montreal is winning the Stanley Cup, but I really don't care about that. we got to get back to winning Stanley Cups ourselves. There's no reason that we should be this bad. Also, St. Louis, 14th last in the entire league. They're slowly getting better. Nah, but real talk, St. Louis. You might go this entire video without making the playoffs once, and you had three or four first overall picks. What are y'all doing? Actually, I take that back because I think in season number one, they actually finished dead last in the entire league, but they got the second overall pick. So yeah, things are not going well for that franchise right now. So let's get into the draft and start rebuilding this team a bit. And we're going to be starting with a lowly potential player with the 24th overall pick. All right, so we're going to keep taking a risk on these first round picks unless I'm guaranteed an elite potential player. So I'm saying the 26th overall to the Dallas Stars for next season's first rounder. So the elite potential player is going to continue in the draft here because with the 88th overall pick, we're going to be getting a medium elite potential goaltender. We already have a ton of elite goaltenders. So this guy's just going to be a good trade asset for us. So as we know, Chickren and Alex Tucker are both going to be leaving the team here however we're still gonna be making some moves 
and we're going to start off with Popov. We'll do 2.3 for the next four years. Ideally, he's in the NHL next season. So we've definitely lost a few solid players, but you know what? We're going to be able to bounce back from that. Before we bounce back, though, we got to go out some extensions. And Marco Rossi, you're going to be the first one here. 9.8 for the next six seasons. We can make that work. But if we can save some money, I'll definitely do that. So 8.5 for the next six seasons. Another important guy we got to bring back is going to be Arvidsson. So we'll do 2.45 for the next three years. Why did I do 2.45? Couldn't tell you. Meanwhile, when it comes to goaltending, I think we're going to be letting Sebastian Kosa walk here. But we're going to ride out his contract for this season. Unless he has a lot of trade value, then I'll trade him away. Because we have a good young goaltender in the system and he's going to be taken over as the backup. Another guy we want to bring back for the fourth line here is going to be Seth Jarvis. We'll do 3.5 for the next three years. He plays his role there. He scores a couple goals. Why not keep him on the team? Also, I didn't realize this, but we actually have Sam Bennett under contract for this season at 33 years old. He's an 86 overall. He's got an X factor. I think we'll have him play on the team for this season, but maybe next year he'll walk away. He's at 33 years old. He's going to decline pretty quick, but I think he's got one more good year left in him. And similar to the last couple of years, there's not going to really be any moves done in free agency here. Obviously, we're giving out some extensions, but other than that, nothing's happening. So this is how we're doing things this season. We have Dylan Larkin, Sam Bennett, and Jake Getz on the first line for a plus two boost. Then it's going to be Lucas Raymond, Marco Rossi, and Alex Dabrinkin on the second for a plus four. I think the bottom six is staying exactly the same. And honestly, these guys perform. Except for the third line, I would like to see Marco Casper, Seth Jarvis, and Arvidsson do a bit better. Defensively, obviously, we were a bit weaker. We lost Jacob Chikorin. However, that means Evanson's moving back up to the first line. Wallander, he's going to hold it down in the second. While Popov, he's making his NHL debut, and he's going to be on the third pairing this time. The goaltending tandem is going to be staying the same. It's going to be Kochekov and Sebastian Kosa. However, Kochekov has dropped to an 87 overall. Don't really know why he declined three overalls, but he's still the guy for us. We have two elite goaltenders. Let's get back to what this team does best, and that's win hockey games. Now, all I need you guys to do is win hockey games. We're going to win 50 games this season. There's no doubt about it. However, when the postseason comes around, that's when y'all need to step up because we can't have what happened last season happen again. Even after the turnover the Detroit Red Wings have, we're still looking pretty solid. Third in the entire league, 40, 20, and 4. Can't complain about that. A good offense and a defense that's still looking like one of the top in the entire league. However, where are the Dallas Stars? Because right now they're not in the top seven and we do own their first round pick. We just have to prey on this team's downfall. 12th in the entire league. If they somehow collapse and miss the playoffs, then we're going to get a solid pick. However, we're not worried about the collapse of the Dallas Stars. We're worried about our team right here. Lucas Raymond, Dylan Larkin, Marco Rossi, they're leading the way. DeBrinkat's still here and so is Jake Getzel. While well, the goaltending numbers, Kochetkov, 30 wins, a 906 and a 281. I've seen you post better numbers, but then again, in the postseason, you know how to step up and win a Stanley Cup. That's actually a lie, though, because in the past two postseasons, you have been terrible and we've lost in the first round both times. However, that one year we won a Stanley Cup, you were that guy. So try to get back to that form. So we're going to do something as simple as this Sebastian Kosa over to the Edmonton Oilers, and we're picking up Warren Fogel for the bottom six. They're saying no, but you know what? We're going to get this deal done. Also, this medium leap potential goaltender we have. Have. he's an 88 overall 24 years old so yeah he's kind of him right now so yeah sebastian costa we no longer need you maybe you and a six round picks enough to get warren fogel i'm going to offer that over we're bringing him on for the stanley cup run so this is what we're looking like for the stanley cup run the top six is staying the exact same but it's going to be warren fogel marco casper and seth jarvis and when it comes to the goaltending situation i actually don't know who's going to be the starter for the rest of the year because technically markstrom's a higher overall at an 88 but kochekov he's got the experience he's got the x factors and everything i guess we're going to find out in the final 20 games who's the guy but i don't think it matters which goaltenders in between the pipes we have two fantastic options so detroit's obviously going to be one of the best in the entire league we probably should be the best team 52 26 and 4 an offense that scores a lot of goals while we have a defense that's probably best in the entire league i think it's actually second best yeah the boston bruins are ahead of us we're only allowing 2.8 goals per game we've been in situations like this before and have folded in the postseason no more messing around. By the way, Dallas finished 10th here, so I mean that pick's not going to be too valuable. So Lucas Raymond, he's going to be leading the way with 93 points. Dylan Larkin, 89. Jake Getzel, 79. out he's got 78. Marco Rossi, 78. We had a lot of top scoring from our top players, but we already knew this. Kochetkov, 34 wins, one shot, a 906 and a 281. While Markstrom, you had a 917 and 245. Eight wins, three losses, one shutout. We're going to make a risky decision here, and Markstrom's going to be the starter in the postseason for us. 
I feel like he's the guy we can rely on right now. Kochetkov, the last two postseasons, he just has not been that guy. Like, like, look at these numbers, an 882, an 887, and a 361 both times. The year he won the Stanley Cup, he was him, but every other year in the playoffs, he has not been good for us. So Markstrom, you played a majority of the season in the AHL. You've been the backup since you got here, but now it's time for you to take over. And it all starts here, the Stanley Cup playoffs. We have the Montreal Canadiens in the first round. I don't care who Detroit plays in the first round. Do not lose in the first round. I am so sick and tired of the disappointment. We have a new goaltender this time around. Maybe that's what we've needed all along. I don't care if you were allowing a lot of goals, like you allowed three here, you allowed four here, and you allowed three here. That doesn't matter to me. A sweep over the Montreal Canadiens and we're off to the second round. Sometimes a change in net sparks the offense. But now things are about to get serious because in the second round, we're taking on the Boston Bruins. This team's been able to beat us a few times, but now it's time to flip the script. All right, I'm turning on the webcam. Things are getting serious. We just beat the Boston Bruins. Not only did we beat this team, but we swept them. Also, I still haven't figured out where I'm supposed to look. I'm looking at the camera right now. I'm looking into y'all souls right now. We just beat the Boston Bruins. We swept these boys, and now we're off to the conference finals. The dream of a 16-0 postseason run is still alive here. I have no clue how it's still alive, but it is. We have the Carolina Hurricanes up next. A sweep over them is going to put us in the Stanley Cup final. Do not fold. Whatever you do, do not fold now. Unfortunately, the dream of 16-0 is dead now because we lost game number one, but we've won three straight games and we're about to make that four. We're in the Stanley Cup final, 12-1 right now. I don't care who we match up against, we're beating them. So it all comes down to this, two of the best matching up against each other, the Detroit Red Wings taking on the Colorado Avalanche. This series could really go either way, but we're also 12-1. We have a goaltender we didn't have the entire season, but once we put this man in between the pipes, things have changed for us. So we gotta turn the face cam on for this. The Stanley the cup final this is the most serious we've ever been here let's not fold here so far things are looking pretty good we have a 3-1 series lead and in game number five we're going to close it out here a 4-2 victory for the boys our second stanley cup things are looking fantastic now okay so i am really happy we did win a stanley cup here but i do want to mention in the first eight games of the postseason alex to had eight goals after that point, he scored three goals in our next 10 games. So he wasn't really that guy, although the scoring here was fantastic. And Pelika, 17 points in 18 games. I was not expecting that from you, but hey, you stepped up when we need you to. And Markstrom, 16 wins, one loss, one OT loss, one shout, a 926 and a 213. He was the game changer we needed. So obviously the Detroit Red Wings know how to win and not only are we winning on the ice but we're also winning off the ice. A medium lead potential player with 128th overall. Also I think this is kind of cool but with the last pick in the draft 224th we're getting a low lead potential player. Now he's not going to develop into anything. Hold on. He's a 63 overall. I drafted a 63 overall with the 224th overall pick. Not gonna lie, I kinda wanna make this longer than a 10 year rebuild just because of that man right there. Imagine if he turned into like a 90 overall guy that we got with the 224th overall. That would be wild. So we're not giving out any ridiculous deals here, just a couple two-way contracts. So on paper, a deal like this might not make any sense. Dylan Larkin, you're going to be aging out pretty quick here, and you only have one year left on your contract. You're 33 years old, so I'm going to send you over to the Ottawa Senators, and we're picking up Jake Sanderson. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to go one for one here, but I feel like if I throw in a fourth round pick or something, that would be enough to be the difference maker. I'm going to offer that over. They're still saying no. Maybe two fourth round picks. We really shouldn't have to add too much more to this deal. A third and a fourth round rounder and we're getting this deal done i guess not we got to throw in a seventh rounder as well the lucrative seventh rounder is always making the difference here so i'm saying this over to ottawa they're accepting the deal but now jake sanderson's about to get flipped jake sanderson thank you for your time in detroit you're an absolute superstar for this team a real game changer but now you're off to the montreal canadians for an alex new hook and a second rounder now, the reason we picked up Alex Newhook, he's going to be playing some first line minutes here. He's going to be our playmaker, Dylan Larkin. He was going to be declining and we weren't bringing him back next season for $13 million, but we're not done with the trades yet. Now, Jake Getzel, you're another guy that's going to be aging out here pretty quick. You're 33 years old. You might be 34. Oh my God, you're 35. Oh yeah, we're getting rid of you. Jake Getzel on a second rounder is off to New Jersey. We're bringing in Alexander Holtz. Not even debating that deal in the slightest. We got to get rid of Jake Getzel. I did not realize he was that old. All right, I feel like a deal like this could be very interesting for us. We're going to pick up Ortez from the San Jose Sharks. Now he's a young player, 21 years old, but he's already a 90 overall. He would be a massive player for this team. He can fill in the top six, so whether he plays on the first line or second line, it doesn't matter. Sam Bennett, a first and second rounder, is going to be sent over. Obviously, they're saying no, but we got some medium elite potential goaltenders we can pack up here. So we're going to throw one goalie prospect into the deal. I don't think that's going to be enough, so let's keep on throwing draft picks in. I think we have a couple more second rounders we can work with, maybe even some 
some first rounders. I don't recall what we have. So I threw in a second rounder. They said no to that deal, but I'm willing to get risky here. Two first rounders, a second round pick, a medium lead potential prospect, and Sam Bennett for Ortiz. You're really saying no to this. This package is incredible right here. They're just bugging, I'm not gonna lie. So I guess we're doing a three-team trade, Sam Bennett and a first round pick over to the Seattle Kraken, Maya Beniers and a second round pick. They're gonna be saying no to this, I'll take the second rounder out and we should be able to get a deal like this done. I'm actually really surprised they're saying no to this deal. I thought we would've been able to get Maddie Beniers. I'll throw in a fourth round pick and hopefully that's enough to be the difference maker. We'll probably have to add a seventh as well. They're gonna be saying no to the fourth rounder, but you know what? We'll throw in some elite prospects. So are you guys interested in a medium lead potential goaltender? It looks like you are. Manny Beniers, welcome to the team. Y'all are really saying no to this. I'll take out that fourth rounder, and I guess I can include a second rounder. I don't really want to. We're going to have no draft picks for the next couple of years, but you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. We're winning right now. Okay, if you don't accept this with a third round pick as well, then we're walking away from the deal. This is more than enough for Manny Beniers. Y'all are straight bugging. So we were unable to get Manny Beniers, but maybe we can get Lindstrom in a second round pick from the Washington Capitals. I'm going to offer this over they're saying no i'll take out the second rounder you got to accept one of these deals i'll throw in a second round pick we're actually going to start with a medium lead potential prospect here's a goaltender just accept this deal i need somebody i can throw in a package here we're trying to do a three-team trade and nobody is working with me right now here's a second rounder as well i'm not willing to do more than this i'm going to offer it over they're saying no we're moving on so we moved on to the Chicago Blackhawks. Maybe we can get this young defense, but I'm going to offer this over. They're saying no. I'll take out the fourth rounder and throw in a third instead. Just accept one of these deals. These are good offers I'm giving you right now. I just can't seem to get a deal done right now. Columbus, please give me David Jiracek. Why will you not accept any of these deals? Look at the trade value. I'm giving you more than enough. If you're not going to give me Jiracek, at least give me Porter Martone in a second round pick. We just traded a second round pick for a second round pick. It doesn't really matter. I don't even recall what we had in that deal now it's time to go back to the san jose sharks so this was an absolute flop because porter martone doesn't even fit the trade block but it doesn't matter i'm still going to offer it over we're not going to be getting this guy right here are we if we're not going to be getting him at least give me maddie beniers or something every single player in this deal fits the trade block maddie beniers you better join the team here i'm going to offer this over we're going to rock with maddie beniers instead unless we can go one for one here Sometimes this game makes zero sense. Why did that get accepted? We finally got Ortiz and we're going to be doing a three-year deal with him. 8.8 .8 for the next three years. That's going to keep him around for the rest of the rebuild. The fact that it was so difficult to get this deal done is actually a bit stupid. And then Markstrom, you know what? I'll give you a two-year extension at 2.3 million. That'll keep you around for the rest of the rebuild as well. And that means we're going to be rocking a Coach Chetkoff and Markstrom tandem. All right, so we went through a couple changes over the offseason, but at the end of the day, I actually think we're a better team. Newhook, Ortiz, and Debrink are going to be holding down the first line. Then it's going to be Holtz, Rossi, and Lucas Raymond on the second. This is a pretty good team right here. The bottom six, it actually got some upgrades. Joe Valeno, he's up to an 84. Marco Casper, an 86. Arvidsson's up to an 83. And then look at this defense right here. 86 overall, Evanson. Mo Sider's up to a 91. And the rest of the guys here, we can rely on night in and night out. So you might be thinking, with a team this good, the goaltending has to be weak. Well, it's actually the best in the entire league. Markstrom, an 89 overall. Backing him up, 86 overall, Kochekov. You will not find a tandem better than this. We're better than the 2022-2023 Boston Bruins that had Linus Allmark and Jeremy Swayman. Jeremy Swayman and Allmark have nothing on these two guys right here. However, unlike that Boston Bruins team, we're not going to be losing in the first round. We're going to be repeating. It's time for this team to get their second straight Stanley Cup. We're too good to be losing in the first round. Then again, so were the Boston Bruins, and look what happened to them. So this team was looking so good, and I had so much confidence in them. I didn't even bother stopping at the trade deadline. Second in the entire league, another 53-win season. An offense that's one of the best in the entire league league well the defense i think it was the best 2.71 allowed you already know what this team does we score goals and we keep the puck out of our own net and saying all that, the scoring did take a step back this season, but I can't complain about the newcomers to the team. Ortiz, 74 points. New hook, he's picking up 67. Well, Holtz, only 54 points. I was expecting a bit more from you, but I think you're going to be better next season. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers, Markstrom, 45 wins, 4 shots, a 909, a 281. While Kochetkov, he was proven he can be a good backup for us, a 929, a 208. When the postseason comes around, I'm going to put you in between the pipes. No, I'm just kidding. Markstrom's the guy for us. He made that clear last postseason. And now it's time for another deep run. The Toronto Maple Leafs, they've won two Stanley Cups in the video. We've won two, but now it's time for us to get our third. So I told y'all we're not losing to the Toronto Maple Leafs. We were about to sweep this team, but we decided to give them a game. But in game five, we're closing this one out. 
Okay, do not blow a 3-0 series lead to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Whatever you do, do not do that. A 4-0 victory in game number 6 and we're off to the second round. But if we're being honest, this series shouldn't even have gone to 6 games. So we've reached the second round of taking down the Toronto Maple Leafs. The dream of a repeat still on our minds. And now we've got to get past the Ottawa Senators in order for that to happen. So if Toronto couldn't compete with us, there's no way the Ottawa Senators are going to be. And in a 5 game series, we're taking this one home. A big 4-1 victory and we're off to the conference finals once again. So we know what we have to do here. Get past the Columbus Blue Jackets and make it to the Stanley Cup Final. Low key, I want to take on the Colorado Avalanche again just so we can beat them in back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals. But if we have to take on the Dallas Stars, I'm not going to complain. I should have told y'all we're not going to lose here. Another 3-1 series lead. Unfortunately, we're not going to close out in Game 5, but that just means we're going to close it out in 6 games. We're not blowing a 3-1 series lead here, team. We're not doing that. We should be in the Stanley Cup Final right now. But at the end of the day, we have too many big time players and some of them are about to make some big time plays. Well, they're gonna make big time plays here in the second period. Y'all are gonna show up, right? Big time third period, we didn't score a single goal. We really got shut out in game seven of the conference finals and blew a 3-1 series lead. Here's Markstrom's numbers because I completely forgot to look at them. A 924 and a 240. And we didn't win a Stanley Cup. That's an absolute shame. Now things weren't really looking good up until this point because with the 158th overall pick, we gained a mediumly potential goaltender. But if we're being completely honest, things can't really look well for us. After making three quick selections here, we're going to be done with the draft. And now it's time to bounce back from that massive disappointment in the postseason. Now we're in the re-sign phase, but I don't think we're going to be making any major moves here. I mean, we can't make any major moves because you don't have any big time players. So we signed a couple guys to two-way contracts, a couple guys to their rookie deals. Other than that, nothing's happening. Okay, so the guy that we drafted 224th overall in the seventh round is already up to an 80 overall. He actually might be cracked in the roster this season i would have never expected some random guy i'm drafting with the last pick in the draft would crack the roster just a couple seasons later that's wild meanwhile we do have two extensions to vote here well two main extensions and the first one's going to mo cider and regarding mo cider we're looking at a contract like this it's going to be 10.8 for the next seven years luckily lucas raymond is going to be a bit less here and we're going to be doing 9.5 for the next six seasons so that's going to tie everyone down for this season and next season well i shouldn't say everyone because danielson will also give you an extension here we'll do one year at 1.7 million and now we have everyone tied down so here you go danielson 1.7 for next season the entire core is going be coming back for this season and next season we're going to be running the exact same team for the next two years and i'm perfectly okay with that seeing as this team did make it to the conference finals and we have won a couple stanley cups together so we don't have to make too many moves here but we are going to make one signing and that's going to be eric turnack to a one-year deal at 5.6 million he'll play some third pairing minutes for us and at an 83 overall it's actually a good move all right so we're not going to discuss what happened last season that was a massive disappointment new hook or tease to break down the first line lucas raymond marco rossi holtz on the second the bottom six here is looking absolutely fantastic and walter i don't know how this dude did it he was drafted with the 224th overall and here he is an 82 overall at 20 years old i gotta give respect where respect is due everyone was doubting walter here but he's done the impossible and he's already made to the nhl like we drafted this man in 2030 we're in the year 2031 he's already cracked the lineup he's gonna go down as one of the greatest players of all time and that's a fact defensively we're still looking incredible here we might actually be better now that we have eric chernak on the third line and then here's the goaltending for this team markstrom and kochetkov two of the brightest young players in the league i mean kochetkov's 32 at this point so he's not young but markstrom's still young he's 25 years old 60 wins is what i'm asking for anything less is a disappointment and since i'm feeling so confident about this team we're just immediately simming to the end of the year there's no reason we should have to stop at the trade deadline we're we're going to be a 60 win team plain and simple so clearly we have the best chance at winning a stanley cup this season because we finished second in the entire league and it's a known fact if you finish first you're not winning detroit 51 wins this season a decent offense and an incredible defense 2.59 allowed by far the best in the entire league although we had the best defense in the entire league the offense definitely needs to step up here i can't complain about these scoring numbers but we do need one superstar to step up and that superstar can't come in between the pipes because markstrom he's already doing his thing 38 wins five shots a 918 a 256 and Kochekov, these numbers spectacular as a backup but at the end of the day we got to forget about the regular season real quick here we have the boston bruins in the first round and when the postseason comes around everything changes all right we finished second in the entire league 
league. So that means we can't lose in the first round here. So I don't know what Detroit's up to. Luckily, we're winning game five. So that means we're going to close out in game number six here. What are we doing? Like, seriously, what are we doing right now? Detroit second in the entire league and Boston's forcing a game seven here. I mean, granted, Boston was a 50 win team. So it's not like they have a bunch of scrubs on their team. But even still, we should be beating this team. So here we go. Game seven. Winners making it to the second round here. We can't choke. Whatever this Detroit team does, they can't choke. It all comes down to this. The final 20 minutes and the Detroit Red Wings, they're going to be locking in here. Thankfully, they're not going to be screwing this one up. And we're off to the second round just like that. And ideally, the Buffalo Sabres somehow lose to the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first round, and then we take on Pittsburgh. Is that going to be happening? We're about to find out. It doesn't look like it. We have Buffalo in the second round. So we already know we got Buffalo in the second round here, and I'll take a look at the playoff picture after we get by Buffalo in a sweep here. And it doesn't look like that's going to be happening, but hey, we've split the series so far after they took the first two games, so that means game five is going to be a massive one. Unfortunately, we're dropping that one. Clutch up, Detroit. I need you to win right here, right now. Game six, the biggest game of this video. We're going to be taking that one, and now we're off to game seven. If we can win game seven, then we have a real shot to Stanley Cup. We just need to clutch up right here. Ortiz, he's picking up the first goal of the game. It's a wrap. We've already won this. We're up five to one. We're closing it out eight to one in game seven. Detroit showing up. We're in the conference finals, but this time we're making it back to the Stanley Cup final. We're not going to fold like we did last season. All right, I couldn't care less about Detroit. Look at this team right here. That's the st louis blues this team finally didn't choke and they made it to the conference finals i want to match up against them in the stanley cup final so far we split the series with the new jersey devils but i don't really care too much about that because i already know we're going to get past them i want to match up against the st louis blues in the stanley cup final we've already made it there now we just need to hope that st louis wins in game seven I honestly couldn't be more disappointed. St. Louis is going to be dropping game seven. So we're taking on Anaheim in the Stanley Cup final. I want to average eight goals per game against Anaheim. I want to shut them out. I don't want them scoring a single goal during this series. I want to absolutely destroy this team. So here we go. Can Detroit pick up their third Stanley Cup of the video here? We just got to lock in against the Anaheim Ducks. And honestly, it shouldn't be that difficult for us. We have a 3-1 series lead in, in game five. We're going to close this one out. A 5-4 victory. Detroit Stanley Cup champions once again. Markstrom's picked up his second, but we have one more year to win one more. We got to repeat at least once in this video. However, based on the previous repeat attempts, we're probably going to lose in the first round. Obviously, in the postseason, big time players are making big time plays. Ortiz, 14 goals, 15 assists for 29 points. He stepped up when we needed him. Debrink at 26. New Hook, 24. Lucas Raymond, he's got 22. But the man that stepped up the most, obviously, that's going to be Markstrom. 16 wins here, a 9 11 and a 272. Not quite as good as last season, but who really cares? that the save percentage and goals against is a bit worse you're a stanley cup champion now we don't have too many draft picks but with the ones we do we're getting good prospects with 128th overall a lowly potential two-way forward and we're not done here with the lowly potential players because with the 160th overall, we're going to be getting another one, but this one's going to be a defensive defenseman. With the final two draft picks though, I'm going to package them up and send them over to the Anaheim Ducks to get a future third rounder. If we got to make some moves in order to improve the team for the final year, we better have some draft picks to work with. So we're in the re-sign phase and Chernak, although you were a massive piece to us winning a Stanley Cup, I'm not going to be bringing you back here because we're going to be bringing in some elite defensemen and he's going to be better than you, plain and simple. Now, honestly, who would have thought we would have got back to this point? Jacob Chikrin, we're bringing you back for the last dance. 86 overall, you still got X factors at 34 years old. I don't care what it's going to cost, you're joining this team. Does Vancouver want a medium elite potential goaltender? Because here you go. This is more than enough for Jacob Chikrin. We got the deal done. The entire roster is coming back. We just improved the defense even more. We're really going to be unstoppable. All right, so we already know what the forward core looks like. Nothing's changed here. We're bringing back the exact same team. Defensively, we're even better. We added Jacob Chikrin. So not only are we getting a plus two overall boost on the first pairing, but a plus two on the second. Meanwhile, in between the pipes, we have our two main guys. Markstrom, he's up to a 90. Kochekov, an 87. This might go down as my greatest rebuild of all time. Although we haven't had the most success in the world, I think we have won three Stanley Cups though. Look at the team we have here. The forward core, absolutely phenomenal. The defensive core, easily one of the best I've ever put together. And that goaltending tandem, unreal. I have never had two 85 overall goaltenders for more than three years at a time. 
we basically had two 87s for the entirety of the rebuild. I mean, that's a lie for the first three years we did it, but for the last seven, we have had by far the best goaltenders in the entire game. It makes no sense how we've been able to keep both of these guys under contract for so long, but here we are, and now it's time for this team to repeat and get another Stanley Cup. Okay, plain and simple, I have no clue what happened this season. Don't worry, we're making the playoffs, but we're not a good team. 13th in the entire league, 44 wins, but most importantly, our defense what happened 3.21 we used to have the best defense in the entire league that was a common thing for the detroit red wings now we're mid we're not scoring that much 3.77 i mean that's not the worst in the world certainly not the best though and defensively what happened to this team maybe we need to put jacob chicken and most otter on the same line together offensively we didn't really see anyone having a crazy season i mean we had some good seasons but nothing absolutely insane and the goaltending numbers markstrom what happened and kochekov what happened to you an 886 and a 355 i thought i could rely on at least one of you guys like if markstrom plays bad then we go to kochekov if kochekov plays bad we go to markstrom but both of you guys suck this season i'm not feeling confident going into the playoffs that's for sure and in the postseason, guess who we get to match up against in the first round? The Boston Bruins, an incredible team that's been incredible the entire rebuild. They're a 51 win team. And if we somehow get by Boston, don't worry, you get to match up against the Buffalo Sabres in the second round. That's great. So in what could potentially be our final postseason series, we better lock in here. No messing around. We're dropping game one, but we're responding in game two. All right, things are not looking good. We got to win game four here. We're down 3-1. We have made bigger comebacks than this, so let's start in game number five here and pick up a big victory. We lost in overtime, the rebuild's over. Okay, that's not ideal. We won three Stanley Cups, but even still, not the way I want to go out. So I really don't even want to look at the player stats, but you know what? We will for the final postseason. This is awful, like absolutely abysmal. And the goaltending numbers, I'm scared to look at those. An 887 and a 320 to finish it off here. Definitely not what I want to see. So the 10-year rebuild for the Detroit Red Wings is now wrapped up. We won three Stanley Cups here. I can't really complain, but I sort of can because there is a couple times that we should not have been losing in the first round, but hey, that happens from time to time. If you made it to the end of this video, comment Walter. That man was drafted with the 224th overall pick. There was no reason that he should have made the NHL, let alone in two seasons. He was a pretty crucial piece to the team. He won one Stanley Cup. He's going to go down as a Detroit Red Wings legend.